as an introduction. So I'll do the theory part, then uh, Benjamin will come and do the practical session. Yes. Uh, so this is a very interesting picture of a baby. So we dealt with work in case of uh, diagnosis and uh, special modeling. And on one of the data collection exercises, uh, a member from Namlonge, which is a research institute, took, took this picture. And I think it speaks volumes to what um, food can do to, to us as humans. Yes. Um, yes. So as humans, uh, we see things in two, two dimensions. Like we have, um, when you see an object, you try to interpret it. Uh, and the brain is able to give you the three-dimensional world view of how uh, something can be interpreted. Yeah, but then, um, so what computer vision tries to do is to, you're trying to teach a computer to recognize an image and be able to interpret it in some, some way. And this is used in so many applications um, uh, that I'll talk about in a few minutes. So what should we expect in this talk? We want to be able to see ways in which uh, computer vision has been used in different um, areas, uh, different sectors in our economies. Um, yeah, and even those that you could probably think about that are not going to be mentioned here. So it's a whole lot of many ways of how to use computer vision in um, uh, tackling given tasks um, in your sectors. Yes, so a few things that I point out here. We have medical image analysis, like you see in the coming presentations, how computer vision can be used in um, analyzing images from the medical field. Then you have area photo interpretation. So for those that are doing crop surveillance, you find that some are using satellite images to do, to do that analysis. And then you have vehicle exploration and mobility. So for the self-driving cars that Michael was trying to show um, material handling, inspection, um, assembly, navigation. So all the things try to use computer vision to, to try and give us more information on whatever task we are trying to investigate. Yes, so for the um, deployment or implementation of uh, these com computer vision learning schemes, we shall need things that I think you already have installed on your PCs. Uh, the Jupyter notebook. I believe all of you have Anaconda now. And I think Nema did a very good job in trying to introduce us to Python and uh, supporting libraries. So there are very many libraries that you can use for computer vision. We have Scikit Image, we have um, SciPy, and uh, um, OpenCV, and all these are the libraries that you can use. So I think. Uh, uh, ben will go deeper into this when it comes to the Troy session. Okay, so we look at the learning schemes that um, we have. So edge operators. Uh, so usually you want to, to be able to detect edges in a given image. And um, the example I have here for that is this thing that you're looking at. So we are doing work in necrosis detection uh, back in the lab. So uh, for those of you that know cassava, I don't know if cassava is grown in Ethiopia, but it's a big deal in East and West Africa. So when you cut the tuber of, uh, of cassava, there's usually that brown, um, brown spot that is a disease, it's called uh, necrosis, which, which results from a disease called uh, cassava brown streak disease. It's not in West Africa, but it's a big deal in East Africa. So the task here was to try and quantify the, how much of the cross-section is infected with a disease, and then match it to a given score. Because when researchers are doing this, they, they give a given score based on how the whole cross-section of the root is infected. So our task was to try and get percentages for that. And so this is, and um, you can use edge operators to do this because it's all doing um, segmentation. Yes, and the other learning scheme you can look at is kernel edge detection. Same thing as edge operators, but in this case, you're trying to, like how you, you can do a sketch of, um, of any image. 
So you're trying to find out the different edges that uh, you can get from an image. Then object detection or any other task that um, involves identifying an image uh, becomes, becomes easy. Then entropy um, looks, as, looks at main the disorganization of um, whatever you have in your surrounding. So the more messy things get, uh, I think you can be able to understand uh, the surrounding and be able to get a separation between what's true and what's not. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's it for entropy. Then histogrammicalization. So we would want to probably um, uh, improve the contrast of an image. So as you can see in this picture, it's a bit uh, of low resolution, but then here you, you're trying to increase on the brightness, and then you can see what the histograms give you. Again, we shall see this in the tutorials that will come after. Um, then here, yeah, of course, you're trying to um, form classification between, um, in a given region, you want to know which belongs to which class using uh, white and black um, samples. So you have basically a classification problem that you, you're looking at. Uh, then this is used by mainly people that are in the multimedia industry. You want to get different shades of an image. And then denoising. Um, given an image that is clear, you can be able to add noise and then denoise it. But I think usually it's the other way around. You want to be able to get a clear image from one that is uh, noisy. So there are different ways of doing this that we'll be looking at uh, shortly. And then template matching. So uh, this is, uh, these are the taxes that we saw in, um, in Addis. So if you have this as your template, then you can use it to, to do object detection across, um, like this is a street. So you want to be able to identify this. But then in your training, this would be like your template that you'll be using to, uh, to train against. And then you're able to detect whatever object you want. <coughs> And then geometric transformations. Um, so if you see, if you enter this room, and then uh, from here I can see the main entrance. But then if I want a, another perception of the room, it means I have to move in another, another position to be able to see probably the other side. So computer vision allows you to do this simply. Or, um, OK, take an image using a camera. You, you, you're able to train on that image and be able to get these other perspectives perspectives about the, the same image. And then for your analysis, you're basically trying to understand the metadata and going into details about an image that you get. So you have so many things that you can do to go deeper into understanding what an image consists of. Yes, so we'll be working with this data, um, these characters from the Ethiopian language. Yes. Thank you so much. Ben. Okay, so the question is for the segmentation that we do with cursor, how do we do the annotation? Yeah. Yes, so um, we, get, we get clean. By clean, I mean um, these red dots wouldn't be there um, for the images that you collect uh, in the field. Uh, maybe I'll give a little background. So we, 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 we go with, um, with the breeders to the field, and they harvest the cassava. And then they uh, start up rooting. They, they, they be cutting the tubers and then scoring. So when they're doing that, we're taking the the pictures of what they have scored, and we get the, their score. And then after that, we go back to the lab with these images, and we use um, we use uh, so we've we've used um, get the name of the 
the tool. So you can use MATLAB to, 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 to segment out whatever is necros, necro, necrotized. So it would be like, to be like a color shading. You shade out a region that you say as being necrotized. You give it a, a, a given color. Then you give the rest of the image another color. So ideally, you'll be forming two masks. And then in your, in your classification, you'll be trying to calculate the mask that is necrotized against the, the surface area that is necrotized. And then the, that computation gives you the percentage of necrosis. I don't know if it makes sense. Yeah. Any other question? Yes? Beg your pardon? Uh, so the reason we concentrate on the entire image is because we want to deploy in a real world environment. Because the end product is you give a, a breeder phone to go to the field and take a picture. So they'll be taking a picture that has the background as well of that image. So when you're training, it's, 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 um, it's important that you take the whole image into consideration. So you do the whole background subtraction and all that to be able to uh, make it workable in a real world environment. Otherwise, we could have just used 3D models for these images and try to augment and do which the model will perform well on those images, but then when it gets to the test environment, it will not perform well. I don't know if that's, yeah. All right, thank you. Yes. So if you're using uh, a traditional ML kind of like training, where you're specifying the given features that you're looking at, you would do that. But I think in deep learning, you, once you select out a given portion of the image, then you try to learn features of that, that segmented out area or the mask, and then to do self-learning for, for that mask. Yeah, so. I think it's a trade-off. So if, if, if the deep learning model doesn't work well, then you're, we're going to the traditional ways of doing it, where you specify the given features that you want to train on. Uh, I don't know if it uh, makes sense. Ben, you want to add on to that? Okay. What was the question again? So, can you also can you use the style where you uh, product the segmentation? The segmented. Uh, in the previous scenario, as a couple of things that you have to have previously. 
So this. Yeah. It's not error. <laughs> you slipped it. Cool. Uh, so you can come and do that. Sorry. So just stretch to the left, stretch to the right, say hi to your neighbor, and then um, we shall get started. I don't know. Yeah, it does. No. Okay. Okay. Maybe you can announce. Yeah. So we'll break for tea. Uh, let's make it brief because we have to make it up early for the field.